Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here, bringing our introduction to linear first order equations and talking about what an integrating factor is. So a linear first order equation here, we can arrange this as dy dx or y prime plus some function of x times y equals another function of x. You'll notice that when we arrange it in this form, this is the only place that we have a y term here. And we also want to make sure that this p of x and q of x depend at most on x and there are no y terms in these. It's also possible that p and q, those functions of x, could also just be constants. In the case where both of those are constants, then this equation here is also a separable first order equation. You could use separation of variables. Here we'll just show you a few examples so you can recognize these when you see them. Here we have y prime plus 3y equals 6. So in this case here, looking at this form, you'll notice that my p of x is 3 and my q of x is 6, and because both of these are actually constants, then this would also be a separable first order equation. Looking at the one over here, we have y prime plus y over x equals e to the x. If you break this term apart here, you'll notice that p of x is 1 over x, and the q function on the other side is e to the x. For this last one here, xy prime plus 3y equals x, you'll notice that this first term is actually x times y prime, and up here in what we call the normal form, we just want y prime to be by itself in this first term. So what we'll need to do first before we start working with this last equation, we'll need to put it in the normal form, and so we'll need to divide everything by x to get it in the normal form. So our normal form where we would start working with this linear equation is actually y prime plus 3 over x times y, equals 1, and here you can see now that p of x is 3 over x, and q of x is 1. The method for solving linear first order equations is called using an integrating factor, and for linear first order equations, our idea of using the integrating factor, the goal is actually to make your own product rule on the left hand side. So if you look at the left hand side, you see y prime plus p times y. This kind of looks similar to a product rule in that we have a product here and we have no derivative here, but we also have a derivative over here. Think about what a product rule with the function y would look like, right? So if we had some function, let's call it u times y, and we took the derivative with respect to x of this, the product rule says that we would take the derivative of one at a time and then add them together. This is the product rule for derivatives. So this looks similar. So let's focus on the left hand side here only and focus on how we can make what we start with in the normal form look like this actual product rule. So let's say to make my left hand side look more like this, I just multiply it by the function u, whatever u is, right? u is just some arbitrary function. So if I multiply this by u, then I get ui prime plus u times p times y. But let me take this product rule and write it next to it and sort of look at it side by side and see how could we make these things the same. Well, it looks like the uy prime part is already done. So what I need to do is actually make this u times p times y. If I could just somehow make that u prime y, then we would have a product rule on the left-hand side for derivatives. So in other words, we need u prime to equal u times p. And if that's true, then we'll have a product rule on the left-hand side. So think about what this is really saying. This u prime, remember, u is some function of x that we're just thinking about considering multiplying by, right? So this is actually saying du dx is equal to u times p. And with these both being functions of x, this is actually separable. So what we would do is we would go ahead and separate the variables. Dividing by u would get du over u, and multiplying by dx would get p dx. We could then integrate both sides like we do with separable equations. This becomes a log rule on the left-hand side, so we get ln of u is equal to the integral of p dx. So if I want to know this magic formula u that I should then multiply both sides by to make this work, I go ahead and solve this for u, taking the exponential of both sides, and the magic formula u that's going to make the left side into a product rule is actually e to the integral of p dx. Notice this integral of p dx is actually all in the exponent of your exponential there. So if I multiply the entire equation by this e to the integral of p dx, this is what's called our integrating factor, we will multiply the entire equation by this, and that's going to make our left side of the equation into a product rule, which is going to help us solve. We'll just point out a little bit extra that in general, integrating factors are functions that we multiply an equation by to make them integrable. In the case of linear first order equations, our integrating factor is this formula, e to the integral of p dx. 
We'll go ahead and work a couple of easy examples with you in this video so you can get the hang of this. We also have an examples video if you want to check that out after this. So we have y prime plus y is equal to e to the x. This is already in its normal form. It looks like this over here. You can tell that easily our e to the x is our q function here. And our p function is actually 1. This is like a 1y here. So the first thing we need to do is find our integrating factor. If it's already in its normal form, we find the integrating factor. And remember that that is equal to e to the integral of p dx. Now if our p is 1 here, then that's just going to be e to the integral of 1 dx, also known as just integral dx. And that will give us e to the x. If I integrate dx or integrate 1 dx, I just get x. So our integrating factor, what we multiply both sides of the equation, the entire equation by, is actually e to the x. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. So I'm multiplying my whole original equation by e to the x here. Okay, so notice what happens here. If I distribute on the left-hand side, when we get into our examples video, we won't do all of this distributing here but we're going to show it in this video since you're getting the hang of this. So multiplying by e to the x on the other side will give us e to the 2x. We'll add those exponents. And you see we have a product rule, right? I have a product rule of e to the x and y. This is e to the x times the derivative of y, and this is y times the derivative of e to the x, right? Remember that e to the x derivative is itself. So this is really a product rule over here, and I have e to the 2x. So now what I want to do is undo my product rule, which means I need to take the antiderivative. So we'll be taking the antiderivative of both sides. Our integrating factor makes this integrable on both sides. So we'll integrate both sides here, and what we want to think about for our product rule on the left-hand side, so it's not so confusing to look at, is really this is the derivative of what? And we've kind of already said it, right? This is the derivative of y times e to the x. This is the product rule for that. So we're just, when we take the antiderivative with respect to x here, we're just going to get y times e to the x. Now this thing over here, we'll actually go ahead and write down the antiderivative. So we'll have the antiderivative of e to the 2x dx. Okay, so again, if you take the derivative of this, you will get this using the product rule, right? So all we're doing is using reverse product rule and saying if I integrate this with respect to x, I get y times e to the x. And what you'll end up noticing a nice pattern with these is when we use this method of the integrating factor, your left side is always going to be y times your integrating factor here. So that's an easy way to tell what product rule you had. So this is y times our integrating factor. We'll go ahead and do our antiderivative. So we'll keep y times e to the x on the left side. On our right side, the antiderivative of e to the 2x reciprocal of the constant will come out, so we'll get 1 half e to the 2x plus some constant, right? And now to solve for y, we just simply need to divide everything by e to the x. And if we divide everything by e to the x, then we get that y is equal to 1 half e to the 2x divided by e to the x would just be e to the x plus, and then if we divide our constant by e to the x, that will actually be c e to the negative x. So that's our first example there. So again, remember, we find our integrating factor using e to the integral p dx. We go ahead and multiply the entire equation by that. Left side becomes a product rule, y times the integrating factor. We integrate this other side, and then we solve for y. Let's look at another one here. We've got x squared y prime plus 5xy equals x. First thing you'll notice if you compare it to the normal form, this is not in the normal form. So before I start doing anything with integrating factor, I want to go ahead and divide by x squared. If I don't divide by x squared at the beginning, I'm going to be getting the wrong integrating factor because I won't be seeing the p that I actually need there to get my integrating factor. So this is going to be y prime plus 5 over x times y equals x over x squared, which is 1 over x. Okay, so now it's in the normal form. So now our p is 5 over x. So now we go ahead and find our integrating factor. So our integrating factor is equal to p to the integral of 5 over x dx, right? Integral of p dx. Okay, well, this is a log rule here. So we get e to the 5 ln x here. And then what we could do with the 5, if you think about bumping it up into the log and making it an exponent, we could get e to the ln of x to the 5. e to the ln will reduce, and we'll just get our integrating factor for this one is x to the 5th. So we'll go ahead and multiply 
our entire equation by x to the 5 here. Okay, so if I multiply by x to the 5, that will give me x to the 5 y prime plus I'll get 5x to the 4 here times y equal to, and then 1 over x will get x to the 4 on the right hand side. And can you see again, we get this product rule, right? This is the derivative of x to the fifth times y as a product rule. So here we have x to the fifth times y prime. Here we have y times the derivative of x to the fifth. So this is our product rule. So when we do the antiderivative now of the entire equation with respect to x on both sides, this product rule becomes y times our integrating factor. So it'll be y times x to the fifth is equal to the antiderivative of x to the 4 dx. Okay, so here we're actually doing the integral on the right side. Here we're just undoing a product rule. This is our actual antiderivative here, y equals x to the 5. Let's go ahead and finish this. So we'll have a y times x to the 5th is equal to, power rule says power goes up by 1 and we divide by the new power. So we get 1 fifth x to the 5 here plus some constant. And now we'll need to divide by x to the 5 on both sides. And so you can see we get y equals, we'll just have 1 fifth plus, and then this constant over x to the 5. And that is our solution for our second example problem here. So just a general outline of the method. First, if it's not in the normal form, y prime plus function of x times y equals function of x, we want to get it in this normal form first so we don't get the wrong integrating factor. Our integrating factor is e to the integral of p dx. Once we find the integrating factor, we multiply the entire equation by that integrating factor. We will integrate both sides, remembering that the left side simply just becomes y times the integrating factor because it was a product rule. Okay, we've got several more examples of solving linear equations using an integrating factor in our examples video coming up. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.